Hey guys, Bittersteel here, back with another video for Hearts of Iron 4, and I'm sure you've seen the title, so let's hop right in. 1936, that's right, Yugoslavia, we are doing an update on the Yugoslavia video I did a while ago. The old method no longer works, so we'll have to try something new. Now this guide, especially the initial stages, is heavily influenced by my previous Yugoslavia video, where I went for Dracula's Revenge. I'll leave a link up there in the corner for you to click if you want to see that video. I will try to go over the strategy in the same amount of detail, but if I forget some things, you can always look at the other video and see if you can pick up what I missed. Right, let's get going, select country, we'll leave Iron Man mode on and historical AI focuses on. But first, if you like these videos, leave a like, consider subscribing and hitting that bell icon. That way you'll be notified whenever I upload more content. Other than that, we have a very cool and active Discord community. I'll leave links to that down in the description below. But enough rambling, on to the video. There we go, Yugoslavia 1936. We have some ideas here. Start off by getting rid of the military. We won't need them. That can only mean one thing. Yes, we are going to be messing about with ideologies. Great, isn't it? As for focuses, let's start with Western focus. Production, not much to produce. We have three mills. Let's put some on infantry equipment. Support equipment gets one. And we'll change this around later. Oh, and make a few convoys. While we're here, let's also do some trading. I recommend trading with the French as much as possible. We need them to like us, or at least not dislike us. That will, uh, well, influence the way they interact with us later. Oh, I see we still have some planes. Get rid of those as well. Just go to the stockpile. Construction. Build a civilian factory in Serbia and some military factories in Morava and southern Serbia. Everything else is going to break away at some point and it will be lost. Well, for a while at least. Now for research, nothing fancy here. Basic engineering, production and construction. And that's the basic setup done. Let's get going. Oh, the Rhineland, obviously, and Western Focus is done. Let's keep going. We will be reinforcing the old alliances, yes. Now the Focus Path will be pretty much the same as the Dracula's Revenge one. So nothing fancy here. We will be destabilizing and devolving our country to pull a reverse UNU at the end and put it back together. Let's keep going. We can now modify the government and get one of these political advisors. We have two options here. We can hire Dimitri here, the fascist demagogue, or Ivo Lola Ribar, the communist revolutionary. Now, since the previous version of this video was done with Tito at the helm, I think we should stick with it and flip communist. Now, this works just fine going fascist. I just want to try this. There we go. Engineering is done. Let's keep going. Computing machine. And basic machine tools is done. We have to pick an industry path, concentrated or dispersed. Not that much of a difference. I'm very much a fan of dispersed since we will be shuffling our production lines around a bit. All right, we have 50 political power. Let's start and prepare for civil conflict. And we need another 100 to uh, fire off that civil conflict. We have reinforced the old alliances. Let's keep going and attract allied capital. Construction one is done. Everything else in industry branch is ahead of time or well, excavation. Not that great. Synthetic oil, not that wonderful either. So we'll just get radios. And another 50 PP. Let's ignite the civil conflict. There we go. As you can see, the borders do look a little bit different from the previous video. So this is interesting. Very interesting. We'll deal with it the same though. Train a couple of horses, as many as you have equipment for. One run, don't set a location and let these train up to 20%. There we go, they are 20% trained. Now let's look at the front lines. We'll deploy one horse division manually as close as possible to every enemy victory point. So just simply set their location, deploy one unit and move on to the next location and deploy a unit until you've put units right next to or as close as you can manage to their victory points. There. That's all of them deployed in strategic locations. We'll give them a general horse boy here. Might as well get them a field marshal as well. Now let about an hour tick by for them to get some organization and send them to their various victory points. And this should be concluded within a few hours. And we're done. Evil twin consumed. Alrighty. Let's keep moving. Let's assemble this entire military and change them over to the basic infantry division. Put them on the border with Bulgaria. 
and just set an offensive order so they can start getting some preparation planning bonus and we'll train a few more as many as equipment will allow five will be it probably maybe six yeah, i'll do six and one run of those and we'll shuffle production around as well we'll need to add toad artillery to the bunch since we have a shortage of it any new factories will probably have to go to infantry equipment and if necessary, fix your construction. Sometimes this disappears when you fire off that civil war. And keep going until we have roughly 47, 48 political power. Oh, allied capital done. Let's uh, give Slovenia limited self-government. Now, if you're seeing this insufficient resources, that is because I lack one tungsten. And right now, I don't want to trade one of my civilian factories away for that tungsten. I want to build a few more military factories and then I'll consider trading for that tungsten. I don't need that much artillery right now. I'll trade when I have a few more factories making toy artillery. It's not that much of a loss in production anyway. All right, we have 48 political power. We will justify on the Bulgarians. This should be fine. World tension is still very low. That's great. Slovenia has been given some limited self-government. Let's keep going and dissolve the Banats of Serbia. As we move down the focus tree, those of you who have seen the previous video will know, we'll spawn a bunch of tiny little puppets who will all have some divisions that we can steal. This will make up much of our military force at the start. Unfortunately, this is going to make our manpower go down quite a bit. Oh, one thing I almost forgot, but I do like to play around with these intelligence agencies. So I like to make one early. I forgot to make one at the start now. You could, but it's not required. I just really like to mess about with it. Kind of computing's done. This is ahead of time, a bit too much for my tastes. So I'll get some infantry equipment. And this purse too is also ahead of time, but not that much. I think this is worth taking. Now, when making an intelligence agency, if you do decide to go this path, I do recommend the cryptology department and the first two upgrades here in radio interception group. The unfortunately named pills, invisible ink, not bad. And that should be enough to get you your second slot. Anything else is gravy, but I personally wouldn't waste too many factories on it. Maybe anti-partisan, if you want to use your spies that way. But definitely get cryptology, it's really powerful. And we have our radios, great. Let's use that slot for improved machine tools. Again, a little bit ahead of time, but it's not that bad. All right, the Banat of Serbia is dissolved. And we have three more puppets, which means more troops to steal. So always do that. This will make a nice addition to our armies. So for our next focus, I will be going with local militias because cutting up our army is really eating into our manpower and this 2% recruitable pop might be pretty handy. And with that cryptology department, I will be focusing my attention on the Romanians. They will be the first real enemy we face. All right, local militias done. Let's move on to a united autonomous Croatia. We're going to keep tearing this country apart. All right, support weapons are done. Could pick up some more in the industry branch, but we really don't have that many civilians, so construction's a little less valuable, I'd say. I'm gonna go with artillery now. 12 seconds later. All right, 150 political power. Let's ramp it up to the best economy. Well, second best economy, war economy. Yeah, we've got our improved machine tools. I'll just pick up construction two next. And this person two done. That's the industry pretty much under our control. Could start on doctrines. They will take a while, but they will be handy in the future. And of course, we will be going with superior firepower in this case because it's already unlocked. It's just so good. Why not stick with it? That's one chunky Croatia. Let's steal their units. Ooh, four units. Nice. And we'll keep tearing this country apart. Divide Bosnia, protect Bosnia. On paper, protect Bosnia is the better option. One single unified Bosnia. Unfortunately, this is a little bit bugged and these three militia units don't always spawn. So I tend to stick with divide Bosnia because I like having those early game units at my disposal. By all means, if you want to try stick with that big united Bosnia, I have some trouble with it. That's our justification done. Let's follow up with a justification on the Greeks here. 47 political power. Don't worry about this guarantee of independence. It's fine. The Romanians are also guaranteeing us, so it will not draw them into this. Which could be a good thing if you don't feel confident fighting both. And it's a bad thing because it upends my old strategy. 
Don't worry, we'll work around it. But first order of business, let's take out the Bulgarians. Simply declare. Don't call the puppets in. And uh, I'm gonna start off by a little cheeky cutoff of their military here. I'll take the speed down and just micromanage this. Avalot Bulgaria defeated with minimal losses, minimal casualties, and we'll simply puppet them. We have plans with them later. Now, unfortunately, the communist branch does not give us access to great puppets right away. They don't start out integrated, instead they start out one rank higher as a regular puppet, so we don't get as many factories from them, but it's fine. We don't really need them, and it would be easier if you did this as the fascists. Now, I have reorganized the military a little bit. I've pulled out the 11 infantry divisions that are our own. I'm going to park them down here in this port, Port Goricha, and the rest of these puppet divisions can sit on the Greek border. I'm also going to start trading for some tungsten. Might as well. And artillery done. Time to make a bit of a sidetrack into the naval branch, and we'll pick up transports. And we'll keep recruiting a couple of these units. We don't have that much recruitable pop or equipment, but Every unit we can get out the door is a unit that we can use. More units, always good. And there goes Bosnia. And again, request their units and assign them to the front lines. I'm gonna put these with the rest of my puppet divisions in Northern Greece, Southern Bulgaria, whatever you wanna call it. As for focuses, let's keep moving. Autonomy for Slavic Transylvania. 20 minutes later. And we have 100 political power. I could improve worker conditions now. I think that's a good idea. Oh, there goes Slavic Transylvania. A few more puppet divisions. Next up, let's attract some access capital. Let's improve the industry. Oh, as the world is going crazy, we have the Japanese here. And the United Kingdom has guaranteed our independence. And now, ideally, at some point, the French will as well. Something I'm going to wait for a little bit. Now, I will try and explain what the rest of the strategy is. Greece is fairly straightforward. Even if world tension goes up to 25%, they shouldn't be picking up any more guarantees than the Romanian one, because we as a teeny tiny nation have not generated more than 10% world tension. As long as you do not generate more than 10%, nobody is going to guarantee a nation you're justifying on. Now, Romania will be different. Romania is already guaranteed by the French. And if we start justifying on them now, we are already over 25% will tension. They might pick up a British guarantee as well. British isn't a problem for us now. Why? We've already got a guarantee of from them, so that would cancel out. We just need to pick up a French guarantee. And there's two points where that can happen. One is where the Germans and Italians start putting pressure on us. That has already caused the British to apply their guarantee. Uh, but unfortunately, it's possible that the French have a couple of bad events fired for them, making them kind of starved for political power. So they're not able to guarantee us right now. Now there's a second event, I believe the second Munich or the first Munich award. That's another point where they can throw out a guarantee of independence. So we'll have to wait for that. However, if the French AI is particularly bad or unlucky, they will miss that point as well. I would let the justification on Romania run and keep the war goal as long as you can until that last day where it expires. If you still haven't picked up a guarantee at that point, I would say the run is dead and just restart. I wish I could offer you more guarantees than that. I'm sorry, this is it. But for now, we can keep going. We have time. All right, we have construction, engineering is ahead of time, so is most of this industry stuff. I am going to pick up aircrafts. I want to stay up to date with fighters because somewhere in our focus tree, I believe over here, we have the IK-3 giving us a nice ahead of time penalty plus a 300% research bonus for your next fighter models. And if we stick with our research, we should be able to get the IK-3 by 1940-ish. And then follow up with the S-49, a 1944 fighter, somewhere by mid to late 1940. 
which is pretty great. Ah, there we go. We are lucky. The French have guaranteed our independence. Excellent. Let's ride this out. Now, they might retract that guarantee of independence. Again, if they are really, really unlucky with political power, that could cause them to drop the guarantee. I believe it's when they go below zero. And we have our transport ships. That means we can set up our naval invasions. Now, we are quite low on convoys, so I don't think we can manage a full 10 division invasion, but we'll see. All right, with our 30 convoys, we can do nine divisions. So I'm hitting everything from Corfu down to Agrinio. They usually don't put troops here. Greece doesn't have a large army and they're concentrated everything here to the north to match our own strength and to garrison the border with our puppet here, which in theory we can pull into the war at any time. Our own navy will be on naval invasion support in the central Mediterranean and the Adriatic. The Greek fleet is here in Athens, so at the start of the conflict we should have enough time to get our naval invasions off before they can sail their fleet out to contest us in these areas. As for research, just pick whatever's not ahead of time at this point. Uh, could get some excavation here. Or you can pick up cast. Doesn't really matter. All right, we have attracted Axis Capital. We could move down here to a United Kingdom, but I think we need to bump up our industry. So I suggest the industrialization program here and go down the rest of the tree for now. And we have another 150 political power to spend. Now, our manpower is quite low, so I suggest you ramp up to limited conscription. Alternatively, it's not a terrible idea to pick the popular figurehead here, just to bump up your stability some more, because it will be dipping below 50 when we declare. And I don't like being below 50. That said, the Greek war really isn't that long. And industrialization done. Let's expand the mining industry. As you can see, the Bulgarians are quite good at building some divisions. So we are going to be borrowing theirs as well. That's the justification on Epirus done. Let's simply declare. Don't unpause yet. Call in the Bulgarians. Doesn't matter if they get a little bit of contribution. Next, start justifying on the Romanians. Oh, need a bit more political power. Right. Must not forget. Let's slow the game down and take out Greece. All right, for the Greek war. It's very nice if you can encircle some divisions to the north here and destroy them. Mostly Alexandropolis is easy to cut off with a tile next to it. Just attack from both sides relentlessly. And the rest of this uh, you might be able to cut off with an attack towards Thessaloniki. But the major thrust will come from the sea. So make sure your naval evasions are good to go and fired. That way they cannot get their navy out in time to contest at sea. All right, let's keep going. Naval invasions are off. Oh, and we've successfully landed. Excellent. Let's start macro-managing this as well. Get the rest of the troops across. Good thing that we took that port right away. And start spreading out from here. Ideally, try and cut towards Larissa. Cut off the entire north part of Greece and push towards Athens. Alright, so far so good. We've cut off everything Greece has to their north. They should be easy to destroy, or not, doesn't really matter. No victory points there. Now we just need to take the rest of the south here. So the Peloponnese and Athens and Alexandropolis, and that should be enough. We don't need to invade Crete or the Aegean Islands. Alright, Icarus IK2 done. This is way, way ahead of time. Let's see the industry here. We have a nice 100% boost. Let's pick up this first three. Voila, that should be it. And with some pretty minimal fighting, we've managed to take out Greece. Now, you could puppet Greece. However, they fixed that bit where you were able to um, annex everyone in the world with your nice little focus down at the bottom of the tree. So that's no longer viable. Greece does not get annexed by that focus. So I would recommend just, just giving all of this to Bulgaria. That way it will be included when we gobble up Bulgaria. There we go, nice thick Bulgaria. Let the Bulgarians deal with this mess. Meanwhile, we will redeploy our troops again. 
Next target, once we get a bit more political power, will be Romania. And to deal with them, we'll need to do a bit of a cheeky business because the Romanians are quite strong militarily. But we have time. We have time. Right, 48 political power. Let's justify on them real quick. Here's they've become more expensive. Fine, 53 it is. Great, they are guaranteed by the French, but that's okay because so are we and by the British. We've also broken their cipher, so that will help. Uh, let's see if I can break the Italian one while I'm here. I'm also going to redeploy my troops to that area. They can muck about in Romania. Now for Romania. Romania poses a bit more of a problem than the other countries in the area. For one, it's military. They have quite a large military for a Balkan country. That's not surprising since they're the only WW1 victor in the area. So they do have a nice chunky military. However, we have troop quality on our sides in a bit once we change our templates and most importantly we have a brain. Now the terrain here isn't excellent. To the north we have mountains and to the south here we have a major river crossing. Both are terrible to attack in. However, what can we do? I plan to use a bit of a fallback line here to protect Belgrade and what's what's left of my country. And at the same time, I intend to allow the Romanians to pour in towards Morava and southern Bessarabia. Once enough of their units are in and we see an opportunity, I tend to close the gap by attacking this little tile here. Well, it's one now. I might need to open up two. The AI sometimes has bit of a brain doesn't always want to walk into an obvious trap but I digress we close this pocket destroy the units in there and repeat as necessary until there's virtually no Romanian resistance left and then we pour in and capture everything now they are also guaranteed by the Czechs but the Czechs shouldn't be a problem they will be gobbled up by the Germans eventually do note though you don't want to finish your fight with the Romanians until the Czechs are actually gone because after gobbling up the Romanians world tension will be high enough for the Czechs to join the Allies and you're going to have a bad time. But again, let's keep moving. Mining industry expanded. We can develop civilian industry or military industry. Military industry does seem the best choice. Three free military factories, though three free civilian factories is also pretty good and that would allow us to build up faster. But no, we must look to the immediate future. We will develop the military industry. I'm also going to switch around production a bit, put one on infantry equipment and all the other factories on toward artillery. As we get more mills, this is probably what it's going to look like as we are going to change our templates now. Take the basic infantry template and we will slowly start transitioning to the, well, one of the best templates out there for single player, the 14.4. However, we, we cannot manage that right now. So we'll have to make a stop gap here and meet them halfway in the middle until our industry allows. We'll start with a 7-2, seven, 7 infantry battalions, 2 artillery battalions. Not great by any means, but it's just on that path towards the 14 force. And that artillery gives us a bit of soft attack, making it a little bit easier to close that pocket. We will, however, need a lot more artillery. That's why I shifted my production around. Let's use that bonus for advanced machine tools as well. All right, we got our delay here. It could move on to mobile defense, but I think it's time we upgraded our infantry equipment first. We will be picking the fight with a rather large dog, not too distant future. All right, military industry developed. Let's get a research slot here and expand the University of Zagreb. And we have another 150 political power, more choices to make. I think since we are about to pick a fight with the Romanians, it might be time to upgrade the military. Though, once again, there are some good options in the political advisor path, like an elusive gentleman, more spies, popular figurehead, good stability. It can wait, however, we need to be ready. We can either get some division speed, 10% speed is pretty nice to close gaps, or 10% army offense, I'll leave the choice up to you. I'm going with the army maneuver expert, division speed is kind of my thing, really like that. Right, support weapons one. Let's get the infantry. Equipment. Ah, extra research slots. Great. Let's keep going here and improve the Serbian rail network. Now you have the option here between the left and the right path. I recommend the improved Serbian rail network because it leads down to central management. Five percent more factory output. Pretty nice. As well as some Ser as well as some Serbian steel. Free steel, always great. The left here with the local self-management gets rid of a pretty nasty debuff, but we've already gotten rid of it through our path here where we went with limited self-government. So Serbian rails it is and our research will continue. Let's get some better artillery. I know it's ahead of time, but 
more soft attack is great. Now I'm curious just how incompetent the Bulgarians will be at managing all this resistance. All right, we have this first three construction threes ahead of time. Let's get computing machine. All right, got our advanced machine tools, uh, industry, engineering, no, industries ahead of time, infantry equipment, same. Could improve the engineers, but don't really think we need to. I'll just put this on the doctrines. All right, real network improved. Let us continue. Uh, Serbian steel, 70 days, but it does require us to have full control of Morava and we will be picking a fight in less than 70 days. So it would cancel anyway. I'll just get another research slot then. Meanwhile, how is Hungary doing? Ooh, Hungary is free real estate at this point. So I am going to uh, justify on them. It'll only take 285 days. Yeah. I'm gonna do that. Should be able to defeat the Romanians before then. Ah, and the French have guaranteed us again. Brilliant. And we finished our justification on the uh, Romanians. It's time to see if we can uh, actually pull this off. We should be able to, we have enough divisions. Manpower is a bit iffy. Equipment's fine. Yeah, it'll be fine. All right, all we have to do now is declare and see what happens. As you can see, it's just Czechoslovakia being pulled in because we share that French guarantee. And we will also pull in the autonomous region of Transylvania. Alrighty, let's get going. Oh, the Czechs are now involved as well. And as you can see, they're very eager to walk into this free territory. Also, don't worry, we can afford to lose Southern Serbia and Morava. As long as we hold Belgrade, we'll be fine. Now, looking at our stability, it's fine. We're over 50%, so we won't get strikes. This is good. Unfortunately, war support is below 50, so we could get draft dodging. Not great. So I will pick up war propaganda while we're here. It's always a good idea to keep stability and war support over 50% while at war, just to avoid those bad events. So just let these Romanian troops pour in. It's fine. Infantry equipment is improved. What else can we do? Industry is still quite a bit ahead of time here as well as engineering, air. Might as well pick up these better guns so we can start making them sooner. Oh, this is a lot of troops that we will be able to destroy if we can close this. Now do note, it might seem more tempting to just leave one tile open, but the AI has had a few improvements over the years and they will spot an obvious trap. Now I say that, this is still an obvious trap, but if it's just a one tile, they're very reluctant to walk in there because they know it can be easily closed. Jokes on them though, because this can be easily closed as well. All right, this looks like a good portion of their army. It's time we went and closed this. Now, I don't want to attack this tank. It's quite capable of withstanding us. So we'll have to find a good weak spot, either when the tank moves or we go through niche here and close it via that way. Though it does look like they're still pouring troops in, so I will let them, just so we don't... Uh... Ah, this is unfortunate. Yeah, we were working on <laughs> avoiding draft dodging. However, here it is, so always pick the most expensive option. Yeah, these are the events you want to avoid. Alright, it looks like they've moved those divisions in. It's time to close this pocket. Alright, we have the new artillery. And let's keep research rolling. Here we get construction three. I seem to have messed up a little bit here. It's fine, I can recover from this. Just make sure not to leave any gaps like I did. That's a, that's a silly mistake. Fortunately, it's nothing we can't fix. <laughs> there we go, we've already fixed it. All right, with that pocket closed, time to redeploy the troops. I'll use my blue army to shield myself from the Romanians and I'll use my good divisions, the seven twos, to attack and close the pocket. This is going to cause a lot of Romanian casualties. We've expanded the University of Belgrade. Could move on and improve the light industry or central management. However, I'm going to sidetrack here towards a United Kingdom. I know it looks silly to start here already since we do have a lot of work ahead of us. 
However, we could pick up these first two. That's 140 days. So that would leave us with just reunite the kingdom. That takes 70 days. Now, the reason I'm doing this is once we conclude the war with Romania, Italy is usually very eager to manually justify on one of our component nations, Croatia or Slovenia, usually. And if we only need to do reunite the kingdoms, we can finish this focus before they finish their justification every time and that would just invalidate it. If we had to do all three, it could end up being too slow, giving the Italians a chance to uh, pick a fight with us before we're ready. So I'm going to get that out of the way now. Now we have that extra research slot, let's put it to work. Might as well get some close air support. I'm gonna try and build some planes later on once the industry picks up. And that's the last of this pocket closed. I wanna see how many divisions that was, or at least how much manpower they lost here. Cause that was a large portion of their army. <laughs> 223,000 losses. Yeah, that was a good one. That was a good one. And we could do that again. That way we don't have to break their river line. Let's see if they'll bite. I doubt it, but I want to give it another try. Oh, yeah, they're eager. <laughs> they're, they're still eager. Shame about that draft dodging, though. That cost us a lot of political power. Now, I don't think they'll pour as many troops in for the second round. Probably don't even have that many troops left. Yeah, I think this is about it. That's all they're still willing to commit to this pocket again. Uh, I'll just close it, gobble those two up, and we'll see from there. So yeah, as you can see at this point, Romania doesn't stand the slightest chance against us. Their army is in tatters. They can't even man the front line anymore. The only thing keeping me back at this point is the fact that Czechs are still around and I really don't want to risk them joining the Allies. A few inches later. <laughs> now to add insult to injury, we've encircled their capital. Everything they have is now cut off from supply and they will start to slowly wither so that uh, by the time the checks fall, we have no problems whatsoever sweeping the Romanians aside. Shouldn't be too much longer. I think once Germany does memo, the next one will be fate of Czechoslovakia. As for research, I'm going to put a bit of effort into anti-air. I will probably start making some anti-air eventually. It's pretty good for piercing light tanks, and especially when you're fighting an opponent who will dominate the skies, like Germany, eh, it's a good idea to have some anti-air in your divisions, otherwise your troops might melt. A united kingdom? Let's get guaranteed religious liberties next. And yes, I know from a numbers perspective, it would be best to get improved light industry, Serbian steel, maybe even central management first. But like I said, Italy does some really annoying things once we conclude this war with Romania, and I want to be prepared. All right, Germans have claimed Memel. That means, no, I can't see it, but their next one should be fate of Czechoslovakia. All right, we have our better guns. We can start making those in terms of research. Might not be a bad idea to pick up military police. We'll be occupying a bit of land. I've also switched production around. I'm making a few fighters, just one factory there. So we can start building up a bit of a stockpile. I'll probably up that later. And I've started making some toad anti-air. And in a few days, the Czechoslovaks should be gobbled up and we can finally finish this whole ordeal. 12 seconds later. There we go, guarantee religious liberties. And that's Czechoslovakia gone. The fate of Czechoslovakia. Fine, now we just make one big offensive and wipe out these Romanians. And we can capture the capital now. And that's it. We're done. Now we could puppet Romania. Unfortunately, Romania will not get integrated when we finally fix our country. Uh, they patched that out, so next best thing will be to give everything to our puppet here, Transylvania. There we go. We have given all of Romania to Transylvania, which is not a bad deal considering that nets us another achievement. Dracula's Revenge, complete as a bonus for you guys. Now let's line up the army to deal with Hungary. Now Hungary is still really weak at this stage of the game, so I'm just going to draw a battle line straight through the middle of their country and we'll be pushing out of Vosvodina. Vos yeah, we'll just be pushing straight out of Vosvodina. Nice narrow front, concentrate all our units there. Hungarians don't stand a chance. It's for focuses. We will not reunite the kingdoms just yet. I want to gobble up Hungary first. Let's improve the light industry a little bit. Now at this point, it's also not a bad idea to get common turn membership. This will keep the Soviet Union off our backs and we will not have to worry about Bessarabia. Now it does lock us out of the allies, though so it's a choice you'll have to make. I'd rather not have to deal with the Soviet Union, so I'm just going to get myself into their faction. 
Yep, and like Clockwork, Italy is doing Italian things. They are justifying on our puppet in Croatia. Let's see how long that takes. It will take them 160 days. Uh, that will give us time to improve light industry and then reunite the kingdoms. Now I do hope that we will be able to... Yeah, we should be able to eat the Hungarians before that. Like I said, Italian AI, really annoying. But if we can integrate Croatia before that justification finishes, it will be invalidated and they'll have to start all over. I'm gonna shift my spies over to Italy, see if we can start work on some uh, collaboration governments. Oh, we have 150 political power. Might as well use it for that as well. I will be getting an elusive gentleman more spies. I do like spies. Now at this point, how you spend your PP doesn't really matter. You'll see the obvious paths here as manpower runs out. Ramp up conscription laws. Don't forget the chief of the army. Maybe military high command, army logistics. There's some good choices in there, but I'll leave those up to you. All right, light industry done. In 70 days, we could reunite the kingdom. Let's have a look at Hungary. Unfortunately, our war goal on Hungary is still going to take 63 days days and well seven days to capitulate the hungarians isn't that extremely impossible but it's annoying i don't think we can make that as for the italians they still have a hundred days so i am going to ride this out maybe with a short focus first but i don't think we have any right now Meh your military mission. Now we don't have any good short focuses so I'll just bank a little bit of political power for about 30 days and then we can move from there and pick up reunite the kingdoms. Now at this point I am going to pick up the IK-3, so our fighter 2s. I know they're still quite a bit ahead of time, but it only takes 206 days to research. That's not terrible, especially considering we can move down the focus tree under the Air Force towards the IK-3 here. That gives us a 2 years ahead of time bonus, plus a 300% research bonus for fighters. Uh, that will allow us to get fighter 3s, 1944 way ahead of time and they will trash whatever the enemy can throw at us 85 days now so we'll take 15 days plus yeah 75 days for them to finish this justification i'll just start on where are we here reunite the kingdoms we should have enough time to integrate hungary now italy doesn't always do this i've just noticed that sometimes they justify on other parts of the country or they justify on multiple provinces giving you more time however well the ai in hearts of iron or any paradox game can be annoying and unpredictable have to roll with the punches sometimes i will keep work on the doctrines meanwhile as well all right justification on the hungarians is done let's just declare they shouldn't join any factions and we'll call in Fosfodina. we'll push out from their territory let's let that run aggressively shouldn't be too much of an issue and we have 19 days to capitulate them might need to um, micromanage this a little bit Oh, that wasn't too bad. I think we did that in way, way less than 19 days. How long did that take? Yeah, uh, five days? All right, I'll take it. And in the peace deal, we'll simply puppet the Hungarians. Yes, I know that I could satellite Czechoslovakia in this part of southern Slovakia and Carpathian Ruthenia. But again, they fixed the exploit. That country would no longer get annexed and they remain our puppet. Pretty useless. I'll just eat hungry whole. Now I'll get rid of these puppet divisions. They can go back to the overlords. They will flow back to us anyway once we complete the integration of our subject nations. The Italians have uh, 30, 27 days left, but our focus finishes in 12 days. So we should be fine. Oh, and Germany is doing its thing. So WW2 has kicked off. Et voila, reunite the kingdoms done. Look at that chunky Yugoslavia. Mm. All that we need now is Austria, which we will take from the Germans, and Italy. So all that's left is to take on the Axis, and it might be a tough fight. But at this point, we already have 1.17 million manpower, and that's just at limited conscription, so we can ramp that up some more. And in terms of factories, mm, a nice amount of civilian factories, 68, and a good amount of military factories too, so yeah. Oh, and that Italian justification is no longer valid. They would have to start all over, giving us even more time. Now, what we are going to do now is to build up our military heavily. Focus on pumping out good, strong divisions. Maybe build a bit of an air force to contest them in the sky. And, uh, well, with our newfound dockyards, make a bit of a submarine fleet so we can hop across towards Italy and take the Italian peninsula. 
Now let's uh, take stock of the situation and see what we have. Uh, 65 divisions. Not great, not terrible, but we can work with this. Stockpiles looking quite nice and yeah, good amount of factories. So more is always going to be great. Now what I'm going to do first is change templates. As you can see, there's a bunch of really bad templates or well, templates we inherited from our puppets, but I'm going to alter ours. I know what it is. I'm going to turn this into a 14-4, which means 14 infantry battalions, a nice big block. And for artillery battalions, this has a good amount of soft attack, decent amount of organization. It's really like versus the AI. This is the way you want to go. Good breakthrough, good soft attack. Tanks will be better. Yes, but these are cheaper in the long run. They will decimate the AI. And this is what we'll build on. And those will be our offensive templates. And let's see what we have here. An ordinary infantry block. So 10 infantry divisions with a bit of support. These units can be used as a defensive template. Now, as for focuses, I am going to rush down towards the IK-3, get myself some good airplanes, but there's some good stuff here as well. Central management, Sarajevo arsenals, Serbian steel, good stuff all around. We have to improve this country as quickly as we can. I'm also going to get sub threes at this point. Submarines are the easiest way for a smaller country or a country that starts without a navy to build up some semblance of a naval force. We'll try and use subs to sneak our way into Italy. Three days later. Now, all right, we have the IK-3. That's a very nice bonus. Let's check out the bonus to airplanes. Yeah, pretty cool. We can get the 1944 fighter researched in 1940. That's going to be lovely. Let's shift our focus back towards industry. Let's pick up central management, more factory output. Right now, I am focusing on producing as many units, airplanes and submarines as I can. I want to have my front lines ready by the time things kick off. Uh, we do have the luxury of waiting for a little bit. Oh, Germany, what are you doing? Um, yeah, in my game, this might be a problem. In your game, this will probably be fine. As I was saying, want to be in a good position by the time Germany does its thing with Barbarossa. It doesn't really look like this is going to be a good Axis game. Either way, yeah, yeah Germans and Italians are already hurting. Time to get the Icarus S49 1944 fighter <laughs> well ahead of time. That's central management and we can expand the Sarajevo arsenal for a few more factories. I'm not going to call out what to do from this point on. It's just a matter of picking whatever focus makes you economically stronger and maybe hop into army modernization for some bonuses as well. At this point, it's just a matter of building enough strength to be able to seize all Italian holdings. That includes Albania and the Dodecanese Islands down here and Austria. Now, ideally, we would get Italy in its entirety through their capitulation, though realistically, it's very likely that they'll lose several territories to the Allies. And if that happens, we'll have to wait for the peace deal and see the outcome of that. I hope we don't have to do two major wars. Now, I'm also building a bit of a fort line to the north here. I don't think it's necessary, but I have noticed that the Germans do tend to smash into our lines at these points and every little bit helps, I think. Besides, we'll be taking out Italy first and then turning our attention to Germany anyway. Grinding our way through Austria will be hmm, difficult. Oh, there we go. Germany breaks Molotov-Ribbentrop. Uh, <laughs> Soviets are going to start crumbling and it might not be a bad idea to get in on this. Sneak our way into Italy and deal with the Italians before things get spicy. So I'm just going to join this German-Soviet war and take the speed way, way down. And see if we can't uh, sneak our way into Italy and immediately mop up this area here. Try and take out Albania quickly, clean up Zara. And uh, if the game is willing, we might even be able to push into Istria. As far as our German border is concerned, I will focus purely on the defense there until Italy has been dealt with. And fortunately, our naval invasion seems to be going as planned. So with a little luck, we might be able to knock the Italians out really quickly. Oof. Italy, sure. Italy uh, seems to have been expecting something. So our troop quality should enable us to break these guys anyway. All right, we've made landfall and have taken a port. Now to cut Italy in half. As far as the rest of the front is concerned, we are holding, though the Soviets are suffering quite bad already. Uh, I hope we can avoid a German breakout to the north here. Like I said, German pressure always mounts. Fortunately, I do have some spare troops available that I can use to plug potential gaps. And as far as Italy goes, we've got quite a bit of collaboration going here. So we made three collaboration governments in Italy. We can't do any more. 
That's all we can do. That should help us uh, to knock them out really quickly. There we go, the Italians have folded, now they quickly redeploy our lines. The only downside to this is that the Allies occupy Sardinia and the Dodecanese Islands. We need both of these for the achievement. If they hadn't occupied these, we would be on track and all we would have to take was Austria. Now I'm afraid we'll have to go into a peace deal and I don't know what the results will be, but we'll see. We'll see, we are doing quite well with Italy out of the picture, looking good. One eternity later. All right, we've hit a bit of a stalemate. Trying to push into Austria is, uh, well, not easy. And in terms of our participation, already at 21%, not bad. I've also started doing a little bit of uh, cheeky strategic bombing, making a few strat bombers just to get our participation up. It's one of the easiest ways to get participation. Now, I don't want this stalemate to continue forever. I'm going to try and break it by invading the French. So I'll try to invade Vichy France and then swing around Switzerland from the other side try to break the deadlock that way uh, I'm not sure how much longer the Russians can keep these losses up but it doesn't look like they're folding so that's good our lines are pretty stable as well it's just terrible train to push through all right we finished our justification on the Vichy French let's draw them in and expand this front line yes they'll join the axis that's fine we just need another front line to relieve pressure from our beleaguered friends in the Soviet Union and this will draw a lot of German divisions this way Naval invasion of Toulon and Marseille seems to be successful. Let's quickly expand. Oh yeah, Germans are shuffling a lot of troops. They realize something's up in France and they are redirecting. Let's take as much land as we can before these German troops arrive. They're the only real fighting power in the area. Vichy France is pretty weak. It feels like all of the pressure has just fallen off the Eastern Front and our North as well. Everything is redirected to France. This is where this war will be decided. All right, made a good push into France, but we're starting to run out of steam. So I think it's best we regroup, build up some more planning bonus and get ready for another surge towards the low countries. Germany is under so much pressure right now, though. They have a very long front line to man. The Soviet Union is starting to recover with a little bit of uh, help from us. They're being invaded in Norway. They can't contest that. The United States has arrived in North Africa. Should be over soon enough. I just hope we get a good peace deal out of this. Eventually. Right, at this point my spies are telling me that German stockpiles of equipment are low. Very, very low. And I feel very confident if I can continue the pressure they will crack. So I will keep up an offensive through France into the west of Germany. German losses already up to 3.9 million. 1.9 of those are ours, so we're doing really well. Their divisions are crumbling since they can't replace their losses. Soviet Union still in the fight. They took a beating, but they're still here. Meanwhile, we are leading in the peace deal. In terms of participation, we're doing quite well. Our losses are minimal, extremely minimal. So yeah, after breaking their line in France, we've just kept pushing into Germany itself. This is it. 
I think at this point I'll be safe um, and just create a collaboration government with Italy. That means we get the Italian puppet at least in the peace deal, so that's guaranteed. And we can focus our points on taking the land we need. We can always integrate Italy later. Now, that's an interesting leader they've chosen for Yugoslavia and Italy. Very Italian. Yeah, sure. Sure. So I'll, I'll roll with it. Well, German capitulation is drawing ever closer. They're suffering horrifying casualties. Meanwhile, we've not even taken half a million. We're doing very well. Also, participation at 50%. Yeah, I think we'll do very nice. 2,000 years later. There we go. German capitulation. And we get to go first, fortunately for us. Italy is already our puppet, so we don't have to waste any points taking their territory. Let's take some of the more important bits. Don't forget, we need the Dodecanese Islands there, we need Sicily. That's already a lot of points. Zara and Istria, Albania and Epirus. We have the Italian lands, so let's see what else we can take. Some of these Austrian bits, maybe. There. If we end the turn now. There. We managed to get enough points, so we took all of Austria. Great. We took all of Albania, we took the Dogdecanese Islands, we took Sicily, and some of these Italian holdings along the Adriatic shore. Italy itself was already our collaboration government, so they're still our puppet, and I think that's all we really need from this peace deal. Could always take more, because why not? Okay, overall we came out of this quite nicely, we took all the land that we needed to, made a couple of puppets here and there. We got two Italian puppets for some reason. We have a... Uh, Collaboration Italy and just the Italian Union. Okay, now we just need to integrate our collaboration government since they control the Italian core territory and we're done. And to do that, send them boats and build in their territory. I'm going to stop taking a focus and just let my political power build up. And that is looking like a mighty red Europe. Et voila, we can go here and integrate Yugoslavia and Italy. Boom, one giant. Socialist Federal Republic of Yugoslavia. We control all the core territory of every one of our starting neighbors. So that's Italy, Austria, Albania, Greece, Bulgaria, Romania and Hungary. I have to say this was successful and I think with that we've proven that it's not an impossible achievement even with the new shenanigans added in Battle for the Bosporus. Now if you like this video leave a like, consider subscribing to see more videos like this one and hit me up in the comments telling me what you want to see next. Right now I'm mostly looking for some mods to play since we are running out of achievements and mods are always nice. I haven't really played many myself. If you didn't like it that's fine. Hit that dislike button and tell me in the comments what I did wrong always looking to learn. And once again, a massive shout out to my Patreon supporters. Thank you for helping to make these videos a reality. I love you guys. You really are the best. And with that, I think we're done here. This is Bitter Steel, out.